Good evening, I'm Shane Jones, leading the news at 7.45. Barbados Business Class is united in its evaluation of yesterday's budget proposal presented by Finance Minister Chris Sinkler. And for the most part, the response hasn't been positive, as they expect the new measures to further limit the ability of Barbadians to spend, causing the local economy to further contract. Today, the Barbados Chamber of Commerce met for its customary post-budget discussion, where a number of business people aired their concerns, primarily about the 8% increase for the National Social Responsibility Levy and the 2% tax on foreign exchange-related ex transactions. Kareem Smith has the story. Well, the financial statement and budgetary proposal delivered by Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs Chris Sinkler has drawn cautious praise and mixed reaction across the political divide. Minister Sinkler declared the fiscal deficit as public enemy number one, and the several measures introduced are aimed at containing it in the short and medium term. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Senator Jector Ince, described the budget as forward-thinking. He says government has taken bold initiatives and has listened to the calls from selectors ac sectors across the nation. Looking towards the future, he expects positive growth for Barbados. Senator Ince was among a panel discussing the budget on CBC TV8 last night. We are going to see robust growth in the economy because of the restructuring that was done. We had to, we, we made some bold decisions in where some persons got laid off and it wasn't an easy decision to make. And we are continuing to look at how the state enterprises are being managed, how best we are going to bring about effective and efficient management of the resources of Barbados. Because at the end of the day, it must be remembered that we are managing people. Barbados, we have no gold, we have no silver, we have no barley, we have no wheat. All we have is our people. And if we are going to protect our resource, then we must protect our people. Senator Ince says Barbados is also seeing the fruits of recently implemented policies. Because the economy grew by 1.8% 2015-2016. We look at 2016-2017 for 2017-2018. We are now looking at a, a projected growth rate of 2.0%. What have we achieved? As I said, economic growth, reducing a fiscal deficit of 11.2%. Of we could have easily thrown our hands in the air and said we did not borrow this money, but government is a continuum. The process of government is continuous. When we look at the infrastructure of Barbados, we dealt with that. Government is being accused of inflicting the largest tax burden on Barbadians in the country's history. This declaration from opposition leader Mia Motley in Parliament during a three-hour presentation that wrapped up just minutes ago. She was responding to the financial statement and budgetary proposals 2017-2018 presented by Finance Minister Chris Sinkler yesterday. Full cost of the taxes, $291 million for a national social responsibility levy in one year, almost $300 million. $140 million in the commission, 2% commission on the sale of foreign exchange, $50 million in excise tax, and I'm going to come to that when we deal with the budget because, as is to be expected, the minister is coming here with mistakes again in his computations. $481 million in additional taxes in one year. Referring to the increase in the excise tax, Ms. Motley says it will result in higher gas and diesel prices than what was suggested by the finance minister. For a lot of fancy numbers, what it means for your pocket, that instead of you paying $3.05 for gasoline, you would now be paying $3.29 per litre for gasoline. 24 cents more per litre. And instead of you paying $2.42, $2.25 for diesel, you would now be paying $2.42 per litre. Stating that Barbadians cannot afford the level of tax increases imposed by the government, Ms. Motley says she would have provided a cushion for the most vulnerable people. We will take 10% of any new tax take, such as what happened yesterday, to buffer the most vulnerable in this country, that what is spent alone in welfare and national assistance board is not enough to carry them through this. 
So that if you expect to get 481 million, isolate 48 million. If you're going to get 400 million, isolate 400. If it is 300, isolate 30. And work with the community groups and churches and identify those households to give them a living income. Ms. Motley also said the tax increases will be particularly hard on local producers. More from the budget later in the evening news. Prime Minister Frondel Stewart has signed a memorandum of understanding with representatives of the Maria Holder Trust and the Brewster Trust last Monday to facilitate the philanthropic work of the charities in Barbados. Prime Minister Stewart thanked the organizations for the excellent work they were doing, citing the skill and the high quality of the projects, including the Maria Holder Diabetes Center at Warren's, nursery schools at Gall Hill Christ Church, Gall Oldbury St. Philip and Sharon St. Thomas, as well as work done on the Fars Children's Home in St. Peter. He also mentioned work currently being done at the St. James Cemetery. Mr. Stewart praised the trusts for their tenacity and com commitment to the island, noting that these projects were at no cost to Barbados. Instead, he said they were the result of a love for Barbados and the wish of the late Maria Holder to see the island's development optimized. The financial statement and budgetary proposal delivered by Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs, Chris Sinclair, has drawn cautious praise and mixed reaction across the political divide. Minister Sinclair declared the fiscal deficit as public enemy number one and the several measures introduced are aimed at containing it in the short and medium term. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Senator Jepter Ince, described the budget as forward thinking. He says government has taken bold initiatives and has listened to calls from sectors across the nation. Barbados business class appears united in its evaluation of Tuesday's budget proposal presented by Finance Minister Chris Sinclair. And for the most part, the response hasn't been positive. They expect the new measures to further limit the ability of Barbadians to spend, causing the local economy to further contract. Today, the Barbados Chamber of Commerce met for its customary post-budget discussion. A number of business people aired their concerns, primarily about the 8% increase for the National Social Responsibility Levy and the 2% tax on foreign exchange-related transactions. Kareem Smith has the story. While there were a number of concerns, the private sector leaders had very little difficulty in outlining what they believe are the positives coming out of this year's budget. Minister Sinclair was lauded for giving a true representation of the dire situation of the local economy and acknowledging the fiscal deficit as public enemy number one. However, officials are extremely concerned about the impact that the National Social Responsibility Levy's 8% increase will have on the economy. Barbados Private Sector Association President Charles Herbert wants a greater focus on reducing government spending instead of increasing taxes. Well, it does address the deficit. It has the entirely wrong effect on the cost of doing business in Barbados and also on our competitive position in the world and our ability to grow in the medium term. We believe that these measures will depress economic, economic activity due to a sharp rise in prices of 10 to 13 percent. The GDP will fall, making the debt as a percentage of GDP rise and more difficult to serve. The Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industry has described as courageous the timing of the introduction of the measures in the budget. While it welcomed efforts to address the deficit, President Eddie Abed says the Chamber is concerned the budget is relying heavily on revenue. He says the problems facing Barbados are systemic and have been around for some time. Mr. Abed believes the island is still not combating the root cause. We're trying to raise more money to try to finance the problem. And truthfully, the problem will not go away unless we start dealing with that element of why are we here. If we not start dealing with going back to the individual to whom the services are being consumed, and a part of that cost, a part of that cost is paid by that individual, then there's no reality as to the cost. The minister said that to stay in a hospital for eight days is over $1,000. I don't think most people who get it for free understand that. So there needs to be some understanding of the value of the cost. Director of the Sir Arthur Lewis Institute of Social and Economic Studies, Dr. Don Marshall, described the measures introduced as reasonable. He, however, believes the diversification model could have been implemented sooner. I'm disappointed that this administration waited until 2017 
to address that issue because uh, it, it strikes at the heart of, to me, what I think is the timidity right across the political spectrum in dealing with what is a very limited diversification that our economy presents. So you ask the question, where are we here? We are here because we've been soldiering on with a limited diversification model development that was held steady so long as tourism and the receipts from the international business sector remain relatively stable. Barbados Labour Party candidate for St. Michael South Central, Marcia Cattle, says a heavy set of tax measures were introduced. She says the island remains in what she termed a multi-factor crisis. Cattle suggests the debt-to-GDP ratio could be higher if arrears are taken into account. Often when we talk about debt, we look um, just at uh, foreign debt as well as what is held by the NAS and what is held by the central bank. Um, we estimate that's about 156%. If we add the arrears, which we don't know the official position on, um, but we estimate to be somewhere in the vicinity of $1.5 billion, these are arrears, arrears owed by government, we are looking at 168% debt to, to GDP ratio. Um, that puts Barbados at easily the highest in the Caribbean and among the highest in the world. Many Barbadians aren't too happy in yesterday's budget measures. They say taxes are already too high and to further raise them will cause more hardship. They believe government must take poor people into consideration when making certain financial decisions. You cannot keep killing poor people all the time. When you put on a lot of tax, everything somewhere goes up, 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 up. If you have increased in taxes, this is less money for people in a hand to spend, right? And if you don't have people in money to spend, the country can go down and go down and go down, I think. Anything at all to help this country of mine, I am for it. If you can go both here a different way to, to get the money raised, uh, yeah, it would be, be good, but I don't know what I'll do, do. And I ain't no way, but the tax thing, is, it can be hard upon the people. It has to be done. What has to be done for country is about country and about party. And I think that we got to make the sacrifice. We enjoy all the luxuries before. We have to make time for sacrifice. Could have come before, but we have to do what we have to do. Okay, we'll take a short break here and come back with more news. Don't let your data experience slow you down. Step up to Digicel. Barbados is fast as 4G network. More than twice as fast as the slow network. Get more with Digicel. Digicel, the fastest 4G network in Barbados. Dial star 153 number sign to sign up to Digicel today. Yes is a beautiful word. It empowers us. It brings satisfaction. And since you earn up to 3% cash back on everyday purchases with the Scotiabank Gold MasterCard, that's a lot of satisfaction, a lot more often. Plus, you get a welcome bonus from the get-go. Scotiabank Gold MasterCard is the card that keeps on giving, so it's easier for you to create many more precious yes moments. Apply today. Together in the Caribbean, talented artists inspire creativity. Every territory exploded culturally. Gary Festa for you, Gary Festa for me, Gary Festa 13 for everybody. Mutual heritage, regional unity. Gary Festa 13 Barbados. August 17th to 27th. Visit carefesta.net. I am Kurt Thompson and I'm a manager at a hardware store here in Barbados. My biggest hobby is motorsports. 
I recommend a beacon insurance to my niece, Carissa. I have motor insurance for my vehicle. And she got her license and it was her first car. It was easy for her to go to make sure she can get what she needed. If something may occur, that should be taken care of by a good company. I am glad I switched to Beacon Insurance. British American policyholders have once again been left wondering if their matter will ever be resolved. This time, the transfer of British American life and annuity policies to Sajikor life has hit a snag in the Supreme Court number no. 5. Sharika Griffith has more. Fresh negotiations are likely to take place between the government of Barbados and Sajikor regarding the transfer of British American policies to the insurance company. In January, the Supreme Court ruled that the final day for policy transfers would be today, May 31st. Government has agreed to facilitate the transfer by issuing bonds to the tune of $92.1 million. However, a mere two days before the deadline, Judicial Manager KPMG received correspondence from Sajikor Life Inc. expressing reluctance to move forward with the transfer as previously agreed. Their concern stems from the downgrade of government bonds by rating agencies Moody's and Standard & Poor's in early March. President of the Barbados Investors and Policyholders Alliance, June Fowler, spoke to CBC as she left the Supreme Court today. Really and truly we came here today to, to let the judge know what's happening and Sajikor has asked for further extension to have negotiations with the government and the judicial manager and we have 30 days or less depending on when those meetings are held with Sajikor and the government to come back to let the judge know what's happening. It was agreed at a meeting between Sajikor and KPMG on May 8th that Sajikor would send a formal request to resolve their concerns. That was done in a letter dated May 25th. As a result, a meeting with all parties is expected to occur in the coming days. Ms. Fowler says policyholders will anxiously await the outcome of said meeting. We were really hoping that today is the day that the transfer would have taken place. And now to have this setback, given the economic situation, looking at the climate, um, the economic climate in Barbados, um, it gives us pause um, to be anxious, but we are hopeful that as they sit at the negotiation table, that the government and Sajikor and the judicial manager will be able to hammer up whatever concerns Sajikor have, whatever guarantees they need, whatever additional support Sajikor needs from the government to make this deal happen will happen. And we will play our part in, in seeking to make that happen as well. The parties are expected to return to court on July 3rd, where an update is to be provided to Madame Justice Jacqueline Cornelius. Sharika Griffith, CBC News. Thanks, Sharika. Members of the disabled community still find it difficult to access many businesses around the island. This was evident as several wheelchair-bound people took to the streets of Bridgetown to mark World Multiple Sclerosis Day. Sharika Griffith has more. Vehicles traveling the length of Broad Street were reduced to one lane to accommodate members of the Multiple Sclerosis Society and their pushers. Police officers who accompanied the procession through the city had to instruct motorists to make way as a lack of wheelchair ramps prevented them from mounting the sidewalk. President of the Society, Terry Hope, says this made it hard to really engage the public, but they were not deterred. We are giving out information to anyone who will take it and we will hope to do a good job today, get more and more people to know about MS, the challenges that we experience in traveling the roads that are not accessible, the transportation that we need to get, which is very expensive because of wheelchair accessible transport. There are many members in the society who, have, who are in wheelchairs. While she's unsure about the number of Barbadians living with MS, Ms. Wop says her society currently has over 30 members ranging from ages 20 to 70. She explains that having the disease can be very challenging as it affects several parts of the body. It is a neurological disease and there's scarring on the brain and on the spinal cord. And all these places that the scars are is where it is affected. So you expect your speech, your vision, your ability to walk. Some people can't speak. The hands, you can't use your hands. There's a whole lot of challenges with MS. And there are several areas she believes need to be addressed. Parking. People parking in disabled spots, we will look transportation, access to stores, all that stuff we go through because we can't, we can't get into every store. Transport, 
we have to pay for it. You can't, I think they bought in wheelchair accessible buses at some point, but you don't get to use them. The society receives a quarterly grant from government, but it has been reduced from $15,000 to just over $3,000. Sharika Griffith, CBC News. The man held after over $1 million of marijuana was seized from a St. James Beach over the weekend has been remanded to prison. Police, acting on information received, went to Payne's Bay Beach where they observed a number of people dragging several polythene bags. They were approached by police and fled. Gregory Leon Holder of No. 66 Husbands Terrace St. James, however, was apprehended. The drugs weighed a total of 620.4 pounds. Holder appeared in court yesterday. A 19-year-old youth was among two men remanded to prison for possession of an illegal firearm and ammunition. Menonlik Marcus Armstrong of Mount Hillaby, St. Andrew, was held on Friday after police executed a search warrant at his residence. He appeared before Magistrate Ian Weeks in the District D Court, where he faced the charges of unlawful possession of a firearm and unlawful possession of ammunition. Armstrong is to reappear in court on July 4th. And another man, 46-year-old David Wayne Harper of Bibby's Lane, St. Michael, was held after police were conducting a routine vehicle check-in in the area of Jack in the Box, Gully Road, St. Thomas. The firearm and ammunition were discovered concealed in a haversack. Harper was remanded to prison until July 4th. After the break, we'll take a look at stories making headlines across our region. Have you or someone you know been diagnosed with diabetes? If so, it is important that you know about Glucerna. Glucerna is a nutritional supplement for people with diabetes and contains Carb Steady, which helps minimize blood sugar spikes. Manage your diabetes with Glucerna. Glucerna, nutrition for people with diabetes, designed for you. Diamond Dazzler, it's time to play. Diamond Dazzler, the new instant $250,000 scratch game from the Barbados Lottery. Available at select lottery outlets. So, in an effort to test the credibility of this so-called speed squad, we have some random questions for you to answer. How quickly can you change clothes? The bag of groceries on the table. How fast can you guys prepare a meal? And go! Alright, which network gives you the speed you prefer and enjoy? Join the fastest team and shift your flow fiber broadband into high gear by upgrading now at no extra cost for three months. Plus, enjoy the best of Flow TV for free. Last question, who's the fastest? I had to ask. Upgrade now. Sign up to be a national volunteer for Exercise Trade Wins. Register online at exercisetradewinds2017.barbados.gov.bb or collect a form from the Barbados Government Information Service at the Old Town Hall Building, Cheapside, the City. The Department of Emergency Management, Number 30, Warren's Industrial Park, St. Michael. Barbados Defense Force Bases at St. Anne's Fort, the Garrison. Paragon Base, Christ Church. And HMBS Pelican, Spring Garden, St. Michael. You must be 18 years and older. Exercise Trade Winds 2017, a seamless state's partnership for a secure region. Across the Caribbean, brought to you by CIBC First Caribbean. Predictions of a stronger than usual 2017 hurricane season. It's coming from climatologist Dr. Cedric Van Meerbeek. He was speaking on the sidelines of a training course for media persons held by the Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Hydrology in St. Vincent. It's as though the latest forecasts that are brought about, for instance, by the National Hurricane Center in the United States, is that we might see a usual or a stronger than usual um, uh, hurricane season. Keep in mind that whether it's strong or not, you only need one hurricane or one severe tropical storm that is slow moving over the country to actually cause disastrous um, impacts. However, the fact that the, the season is expected to be at least normally active, but possibly also stronger, that means that we should brace for impacts. We should prepare ourselves mostly, and we should remain up to date with what our meteorological services are forecasting. 
Climatologists are predicting 11 to 17 named weather systems, of which 5 to 9 are expected to become hurricanes. Out of these, 2 to 4 are expected to be intense hurricanes. Several former heads of state and governments in Latin and Central America have called on Caribbean governments to openly condemn the ongoing political unrest in Venezuela. In an open letter to the Caribbean leaders, the former leaders, including Philippe Calderon of Mexico, Oscar Arias of Costa Rica, Maria Moscoso of Panama, and Alfredo Cristiani of El Salvador, have strongly condemned the military government of Nicolas Maduro in Venezuela. CARICOM foreign ministers have, however, called for non-interference in the internal affairs of the country. Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, Dr. Timothy Harris, has welcomed a, com a commitment from Vietnam to help the Twin Island Federation attract direct investment from the Asian country. Harris recently held talks with the Vietnamese ambassador. The diplomat outlined some areas where he believes the two countries could begin the search for investment. The ambassador said another area of potential investment is in the area of telecommunications. Oil that leaked from a facility in Trinidad and Tobago has now reached the Dutch islands of Aruba and Curaçao. Neighboring islands, including Margarita and Bonaire, recently reported the oil on their shores. As a result, the Maritime Authority of Curaçao has urged the public hotels and dive schools to be on alert for the possibility of residue in the sea. An executive member of regional airline Liat has resigned, its chief commercial officer Lloyd Caswell. His resignation reportedly took effect last week. Caswell was appointed to the post in 2014. Across the Caribbean, brought to you by CIBC First Caribbean.